Welcome back, Budget Gamer fans. Today we're going to be looking at a game called Count Lucanor for the Switch, and it just went on sale 60% off on the eShop. So while I've been wanting to play it for a while, I could finally download it last night. And although it is a puzzle game that you could really commit some time to and beat in one sitting, it is one that you're going to want to play again and again, just because of how deep and how rich this story is. You start with the story as Hans, a small farm boy, 10 years old, whose father went off to war and has pretty much been left with his mom in poverty. Upset by his shabby living circumstances, at 10 years old, Hans has become a man and he's ready to take on the world. Leading up to the deeper gameplay, you encounter several really quirky characters that you're really not sure how to interact with, if you should help them or just kind of pretend you didn't see them. But regardless, that decision's up to you. Getting into the actual gameplay though, it doesn't take very long for the player to discover just how dark and twisted this puzzle game really is. Though the overarching theme is definitely a coming of age story, forget about Fifel Goes West and think more Pan's Labyrinth. As you play through the game, solving puzzles, moving room to room, and encountering more and more characters, each interaction gets a little more bizarre, a little more twisted, and the scenery gets a little more graphic and a little more dark. As you wind your way through the maze-like castle of Count Lucanor, trying to avoid both the servants in the castle and all the traps that have been laid for you, you work to slowly compile letters to hopefully be able to eventually spell the name of the Count's aid, as spelling the name of his ghostly blue servant is thought to be the last trial. Though hopefully not spoiling too much, I want to let you know that that's only about the halfway point of the game. There are plenty more puzzles, traps, darker, and more twisted demons to deal with after that point. Despite this being a puzzle game with a linear story, the gameplay actually is isn't as linear or scripted as you would think. Even though I had died and restarted at multiple points through the early gameplay and tried to come back around and circumvent some of those pitfalls, I'm actually figuring out just now after having actually completed the game that there are some puzzles that I didn't even start to uncover. Depending on the choices you make in the game, certain characters or certain events may or may not ever actually occur. While I'm not exactly 100% certain on how many, it is likely that there are very few events that are actually necessary to complete to push the gameplay forward. And though these game progression milestones are set in place at certain points, there is a lot of exploration you as a player can actually have fun with. Because even though you don't have to do everything, the things you do or don't choose to do do carry through all the way to the ending credits. Now, as I've only beaten the game once, I'm not sure if there's a real good ending, bad ending scenario going on, but I'd love to hear in the comments if anyone does find out. But I do intend to play this one again at least a few times, so I'll be letting you know in the comments as well. This game was actually a little difficult to do a review for because there's so much to it that I don't want to spoil. But overall, it is a brilliant game with a really great, very intense, and very dark story. Story. The closest association I can do is a coming-of-age story much like Pan's Labyrinth. And if you saw that movie and walked away thinking, what was real? What did I just watch? You may have a touch of deja vu after you finish Count Lucanor. It's a beautifully put together game with a very immersive environment, including the graphics, the sounds, the lighting dynamics, and the character development. And even though I got frustrated at having to start over a few puzzles back because you can only save at one point and it costs gold, that actually became a point of the game that I really enjoyed from a developmental standpoint. Mechanics like the absence of auto saving or even permadeath really do a lot to encourage the player to invest in the game, to play more smartly, more seriously. And in a puzzle game where you can't fight but just avoid enemies, death should actually be something you fear as a player. And this kind of really high cost paid save system really works to nurture that for the player. Especially now that it's 60% off, I'd have to say Count Lucanor is a game that anyone who's interested in puzzlers, RPGs, or any sort of unique indie should really add to their collection. It's not a high price tag, but it's definitely a game that you're not going to forget. Well, that's it for the review of Count Lucanor. I really hope that you enjoyed it or found it somewhat insightful. If you think you might want to try this game, let me know in the comments, or if you've played it and have other thoughts on it, let me know. Feel free to throw me a like, show your support, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest content. These videos come out about three times a week, so feel free to hit that little bell icon if you want to stay updated for as soon as they hit YouTube. Anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. So as always, thanks for watching.